Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Lana. Okay, so today we're going to do um, a video entitled Why Home Prices Will Likely Go Up This Year. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I know this is not what you're looking for. Um, but so new data has come out from CoreLogic. Uh, it was in an article they published called U.S. Home Price Insights, February 2023. Um, I've got a bunch of charts here. We're going to go over all the data. Their forecast is for home prices to go up this year. Now, everyone's saying, no, they're, they've got to fall. They're, they're citing the shadow inventory, all the foreclosures, the, I don't know, the World Series from 2001. I mean, there's all these reasons. Um, so uh, before we talk about that, though, I'm gonna, I want to do a humble brag, and then we're going to go through the thing. <laughs> okay. You and humble. Go. Okay. So many of you know we had a radio show. I have a... I want to go through and find some key stuff. This this is a this is a disc that had an episode of Talk About Houses from November of 2006. Now this was a radio show, so our radio programs were all uh, uh, recorded. Yes. And then what we would do is we had a website called TalkAboutHouses.com, and now that if you go to that web address now, it just takes you to this the the, the set website's not there anymore. But we posted all of the links so you could listen to all of our episodes online. Almost nobody was doing that in 06. Right. We were effectively like the first ever podcasters. <laughs> so if somebody ever says, who is the oldest real estate podcaster? We were doing it before like podcasts existed. Right. So before there, was, before there were podcasts, we were doing them. <laughs> okay. We're going to go right into the meat of it. And then we're going to show you break out some different markets. Uh, so the first chart, this is the CoreLogic Home Price Index Forecast. Um, okay, so the current uh, month over month is minus 4%. Year over year is 6.9%. This is year over year one. And this is last year to this year. Right. And this is already adjusted because this just came out. So they put this out in January looking back at December. And then they revised the numbers. So these are the most accurate and up-to-date numbers. So the housing crashers who said the housing market has crashed or it will crash or whatever, uh, the home prices are up 6.9% year over year. Mm -hmm. So not so, minus 40, not minus 50. Okay. This is nationwide. This is the whole country. This isn't Vegas. Please, you know, spare me the new home builder down the street who just cut his price 20,000. This is the whole country. 6.9% year over year. The forecast for month over month is minus 2% or 0.2%. But- Year over year, a forecast of 3%. Now, how do they, like, this is obviously a guess. We're not saying this is going to happen. It could be 5, it could be minus 10. It could be any number, right? How? Wh where do they use, like, how are they getting this data? What are you using to make this information? Okay, so they're using lots of data points. So, of course, they're, they're using all the MLSs, but then they're also using uh, other data points. So, for example, they're looking at private party sales. So they're looking at all kinds of things, including builders and, and, and lots of different data. So that's why they revise the numbers because as they get more of this of these other sources, that's how the revised numbers come out. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to show the individual states uh, year over year percent change. This was the last year. Uh, we're covering up Alaska, Hawaii there in the 5 to 10. What's interesting about this is it's everything dark blue. I don't like the way they use these colors. Everything dark blue, because red normally means bad. But if you look at this, the darker red it is, it's higher. So anything dark blue had less than a 5% appreciation. Mm -hmm. Everything light blue, 5 to 10. The pink, the like the light pink is 10 to 15, 15 to 20, and then 20 plus for the, for the bright uh, there. And what's interesting is that only one of these states year over year actually did decline. Okay, so quick, we'll give you three seconds, right in the comments, which one is it? Uh, and, okay. Let me give you a hint. Okay. It's one of the ones that says less than five, <laughs> because negative one is less than five. Okay, in three, two, one, and the state is Idaho. Idaho. Idaho lost 1%. However, it was, what's funny is it lost 1% last year, but the year before it was the leading state. It right. had the highest appreciation. So. That's called an adjustment. It adjusted down one, not a crash, down 1%, not a cr right. crash. It, it definitely adjusted. But of and course, you know, there are places that still saw double digit increases. So, you know, that, that's how we get that 6.9%. You get the, the ones that had modest increases 
and then you get the ones that really went gangbusters, and that's how we got the 6.9. Okay, this is the home price change the top 10 states. We have another slide to show you that shows you the cities. Um, so Florida was the highest. Vermont was a surprise. But one of where did the Vermont people come from? So they came from bigger places. They came from you know places like New York and okay. um, you know big Boston, Boston, Philadelphia, okay. places like that. People got out of cities and and went. And remember, Vermont's not a very big state, so it doesn't take a lot of people. And then a lot of people that came there had wealth. They just buying up houses, so that pushed it up. Uh, South Carolina, of course. What's going on there? Lots of industry. Lots of industry. The number one manufacturing state. Boeing's down there. A bunch of new companies are down there. Um, of course, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, Arkansas, Indiana, Tennessee, Alabama, like a lot of southern states, a ton of southern states, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the, the South is thriving, which is great. Okay. The next one we're going to do, these are the top cities year over year. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see Miami, 19.5%. Uh, Boston had uh, some appreciation there. Now, Boston was a, was a snapback year. Okay, so tell, tell, tell us what a snapback is. Okay, this is what happened. People started to leave Boston, mm -hmm. but then they came back, <laughs> just like they did in New York City. Mm -hmm. Actually, what's funny is rents are up in New York City 20% year over year mm -hmm. because rents tanked in 2021 when, every, when a ton of people left, mm -hmm. and then the people came back and rent shot back up. Miami, 19.5%. Why, why, why? Why is Miami up almost 20% year over year? Oh, goodness. Uh, how much time do you have? So Miami is up because everybody wants to go down there because Miami is nice. The weather is nice. Uh, Miami is business friendly. Miami um, politicians have been enticing businesses to move down there. Uh, but Miami is, if, to, from some perspectives, um, the new Silicon Valley. Lots of tech companies have moved down there. Uh, lots of people find Miami a great place to live. Uh, no income tax. How, should I keep going? No, that's it. Yeah, it's, it's it's like it's like Silicon Valley, you know, East Coast basically. Oh, Silicon Valley in a bikini and greater weather. And everyone's <laughs> it's amazing how many people have venture capital firms have gone down there. Yes, a bunch of startup people I know have opened either offices or moved their whole team out there. Mm -hmm. My favorite one on this is Las Vegas. Okay, yay! yay. <laughs> Up four point seven percent year over year. Not sure what's going to happen here in Vegas. Um, Inventory, you know, is is uh, declining again. We we kind of, it shot rapidly back up to normal level. Now it's, it's shooting back down. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep a track and we'll keep doing market updates about Vegas. Um, so that's pretty, th those are all sexy. Now the next thing we're going to show you, this is the, oh, I'm going to go back to this map real quick. Let me show you this. Two cities that have, that are not on here because they got hammered. Now this okay. was the top 10. Mm -hmm. Seattle and San Francisco have had the biggest there's the softest markets well i think you know um oregon hasn't been doing that great either oregon surprisingly has not been doing good but for some reason there was a bunch of people remember that we did the last thing right. where, like everyone's moving to more oregon okay now but wanna is so well, let's go through this next slide okay. these are the five markets that core logic has said with the highest risk of home price decline now before you just look at this chart, this does not mean when it says 70% probability of decline, this does not mean home prices will fall 70%. I guarantee you someone's doing a market video or video that says home price is going to fall 50 to 75%. This is the confidence score. There's a 50 to 75% chance that prices will decline in these markets. So now take that with a big grain of salt because remember like... A few months ago, there was a 100% chance we'd have, we'd have a recession, and then there was a 75% chance, and so on. So this is kind of that sort of thing. You, they're, they're talking to experts, and they're saying, hey, how likely is this? And based on their answers, that's how they're accumulating these projections. And, and to sort of follow up with what Juan just said, there is a lot of volatility in everything that's happening. Because remember, the stock market tanked. All these tech companies got rid of people. And then the market said, oh my gosh, these tech companies are now super lean and they dumped a bunch of money into them and all these tech companies shot up in value. And now people are like, oh wait, now, and then the jobs report came out mm -hmm. and the jobs report had the lowest inflation in like 52 years or the lowest unemployment, unemployment, unemployment 52 years. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And the fear is that in, there's, and, and home prices are going, <laughs> starting to go up again. So now there's this fear as inflation is coming back, mm -hmm. but we don't know, right? We don't know that's the case. But these, if you look at these markets, Salem, Oregon, 
Bellingham, Bremerton, and Olympia, uh, Washington. And then there's a Florida one in here, but this is not Miami. This is Crestview, Fort Walton Beach, Destin, Florida. This is literally like the panhandle and the beach, beachy communities. Um, these are de leisure destinations. Right. And why would leisure destinations maybe are not doing well when Florida is like super hot? You know, that's a puzzle to me because I think leisure destinations tend to do well uh, most of the time, we all like going to the beach, and if you're looking for a second home, what better place to purchase a second home than in a beach community? Yeah, it's also possible that they were overbought last year, so this is an adjustment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just because if somebody says you should buy when, and we're not saying you should buy a house, mm -hmm. we're just saying if somebody says home prices are going to fall in 2025 by 5%, you should wait then to buy a house. But they don't tell you that in the next two years, home prices will be up 20%. So don't buy now. Wait till home prices go up 20%. Then when they fall 5%, that's when you should buy because you could say you bought after home prices to drop 5% and you, you can say you're a big hero even though right. you okay, screwed so up. How many of you think that Florida is due to get hammered by a hurricane and think that those numbers have something to do with that? I was thinking about that when I read the article. I thought, okay, well, maybe like some, there, there's something to that because it's, it's been a minute since Florida has gotten whacked around by a hurricane. So maybe maybe they're due for one. Maybe that's what these people were thinking. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go on the Wayback Machine and try to find a, a shot of the Talk About Houses webpage and post it. If I can find it, I'm going to put it. I don't know if I can find it on the Wayback Machine. It's an internet thing where it shows like stuff from a long time ago. Okay. But okay. So you got a project. <laughs> okay. So Juana, I'm going to let you sort of wrap up the video. Okay. CoreLogic is there are only one person's opinion. A team's right. opinion, but yes, they're a t it's a team. They have yeah. a lot. Of, they have more data than anybody, probably. Yes. Um, what, like, what's your estimate for what could derail that? What could derail the home prices going up, like they said? So, you know, we've talked a lot about um, black swan events, uh, and of course, the pandemic is not that far in our rearview mirror. So, so we do remember that. But I think one of the things that could derail all this is inflation. Um, kind of rearing its ugly head, I think that would definitely um, have an impact on this. And then the other thing is there are a lot of um, legislatures that this is their their year where they meet. Like, for example, in Nevada, our legislature is, is meeting now uh, because they only meet every other year, thank goodness. And <laughs> so uh, policies really do make a big difference. And, and we've seen a lot of policies uh, over the last year or so that have impacted real estate values. We've seen a lot of policies regarding rent control and what those do and all those sorts of things. And they, they do have uh, a, an outsized influence on, on what happens with property values because things like that severely impact property owners and then that influences the decisions that, that they make. Okay. There's a lot happening. Um, you know, all... All we can do is when we get data, talk about it and see what we think is going to happen. We don't think we know more than anybody, but uh, we've been pretty, I think we've been pretty upfront and, um, you know, about our opinions and everything, but we'll see. I mean, uh, the, the other video we did, it was uh, the highest estimate was up 10% and the lowest estimates were down 20%, but the 20% were peak to trough. Mm -hmm. So that, remember, they're already down 8% peak to trough in right. some markets and they are in Vegas. They're not nationally down 8%, right. but in Vegas they're down 8%. So. Right. so tell us what you think. We want to hear from you. Uh, did you put in Idaho when I told you to guess? Or did you it's too late it now. State? Yeah. <laughs> Don't put it in and try to look like a hero. We'll know. No, but we, we do, we do want to know what you think. Uh, we're interested in your comments. So please uh, like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave us a comment, tell us where you're watching from, tell us what's important to you, give us video suggestions, we do listen to you, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.